The whole look of Jocelyn was a really fun thing to dive into. The physicality of a character helps you get into their skin and into their shoes, literally. I am so obsessed with Jocelyn's whole wardrobe and also why she chooses to wear the things that she does and when. Is that what you're wearing? Yeah. With the heels? I want to be taller than him. My favorite look, I would have to say, is the red robe that she was wearing at the photo shoot. She wears these stockings and the heels and the whole thing, and it really felt like a movie star moment for her. There was a bunch of different inspirations for Jocelyn's costume design. There was a Slim Aaron's photo that he had taken of Marilyn Monroe. I'm lounging. <laughs> OK. We wanted to create something really timeless the femme fatale character in a totally new light. It was really important for the back to be super sexy and figuring out how to make a backless robe was a fun challenge. We kept a really natural approach to her hair. The inspiration was Kate Moss, fashion, party girl. You know, Lily has this beautiful wave. We just kind of let it do its thing. I wanted it to look loose and effortless and just kind of like cool girl club hair. She really tailors her looks to how she wants to feel in a certain moment and how she wants to present herself. And I think that that, you know, says a lot about her as a performer. <laughs> I really have a soft spot in my heart for the outfit that she wears when Tedros comes over with his friends for the first time. I miss you. She's wearing that really short red crop top and that leather skirt that has a slit up the back and those really tall heels. It's a mix of vintage 90s era Terry Mugler and Gautier. She's in her own house and she's wearing this like crazy outfit, which is kind of incredible. I love it. My third favorite look is when she goes out on stage and addresses the crowd. The performance dress was really important to show the transformation she's gone through. The white dress was a nod to basic instinct to Sharon Stone's character. And she's got this very Dolce Vita Italian updo. She's grown into this pop goddess instead of just like a pop star. It feels like the most evolved version that we see of her. And at this point, it's a stark contrast from the first time we see her as a pop star to where she is now. Very old Hollywood, inner feline flick eyeliner. She's channeling a lot of wisdom in that look. She ends up in this kind of angelic state, and I feel like you can see that in that final episode. <laughs>